welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany, and if this is your first time stumbling across one of my videos, I do focus on fashion, beauty, and lifestyle. So if that seems like something that you may be interested in, please think about clicking on that subscribe button if you enjoy the content, of course. Also, if you're already a subscriber, go ahead and click on that notification bell. I upload twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and sometimes I'll put out a bonus video on Sunday, so I don't want you to miss any of them. In today's video, we are going to be revisiting my luxury wish list that I made for 2020. I made this wish list in January of all the things that I wanted to acquire, um, you know, kind of doing the whole manifestation thing, writing it down, making it happen. So let's go ahead and get into my wish list and see what I was able to pick up and what I did not get. And let's see if there were any reasons why I didn't acquire those things. So if you are interested, then stick around. So let's go ahead and revisit 2020's luxury wish list. So the first item that was on my luxury wish list was a Chanel small double flap in classic black with gold hardware lamb skin okay so i did want that and i still kind of do but as you guys know in 2020 chanel has really outdone themselves okay they have increased pricing so much it is just it's astronomical at this point so the more the prices go up the more that i'm over it and now i think i want to go the vintage route definitely pre-loved i mean purchasing a brand new classic flap from chanel is yeah it's a lot you know however i still did scratch that itch and i purchased these two chanel bags now this is my lambskin fix like i said i wanted the uh small lambskin and this is my lambskin fix now this is what they consider to be a seasonal bag so they're not as expensive as the classics um but you still get a unique piece and that's something that i like this is my pearl handbag you guys have seen this several times you can wear this crossbody and it has the new champagne gold hardware i just love this bag now this is a little bit larger than a mini but definitely smaller than the small double flap so this is one of my pride and joys. I am so happy that I have this bag and I got this for a really great deal, brand new from the Chanel Boutique at Nordstrom. So you can't beat that with a stick. And I also picked up a fun bag. Now this is very reminiscent of the medium classic, but of course, as you can see, this is knit and it has the colorful hound's tooth. It is so cute. I put a top handle on mine just because I love top handle bags, but this is just adorable. It's shaped just like the uh, medium, except it only has one single flap. And the inside of this bag, y'all, is so pretty. I have an insert in there, but it is tie-dye. It is so cute. This is like a collector's piece, in my opinion. It's just so fun. And even though it's super bright, it goes with everything. So my original plan was to go to Paris to get the classic flap because I just thought that that would be a great way to commemorate that trip. Um, and of course, it's a little bit cheaper overseas. However, um, due to the state of the world, you know, obviously I was not able to travel this year. Um, and I was able to get two bags and they probably equal that one bag you know from the store so i'm happy with the two that i got in that place and i may revisit uh you know the small classic later probably in a vintage style so the next bag that was on my wish list was the chanel trendy cc with gold hardware in the small size um i still want that bag i love that bag so much it is a fully leather bag it's kind of heavy um i've been tempted to purchase that bag several times i just can't quite pull the trigger but I love it okay it is a beautiful bag so that probably will stay on my wish list I'll make a new wish list for 2021 um but yes I do love that bag but I did not pick that up this year so I wasn't able to check that one off the next item on my wish list was a pair of sneakers that I'm actually wearing them today and they are the LV arch light sneakers um the classic white with the classic brown monogram and I was wanting these for a little minute but I had had the Balenciaga dad sneakers that I really did like but they were just a little bit 
extra. You know what I'm saying? Like these are extra too, but they're a little bit more calm. Mine, my Balenciagas were pretty colorful. So I ended up selling those in another pair of my uh, Louis Vuitton sneakers. I actually sold my Louis Vuitton sneakers on TradeZ and I picked these up. And I've worn these way more than both of those other pairs of shoes. So I'm really happy with these. Um, I picked these up retail at Louis. And by the time I picked them up, I think they retailed for like a thousand dollars. Not quite sure. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with these. I feel like I get way more use out of these than the other two pairs. So these were a good investment for me and I'm happy to be able to check these off my list. I feel like everybody needs, you know, at least one luxury pair of sneakers, something like fun and funky like these, and then just a classic pair. The next item on my luxury wish list was a pair of Fendi cowboy boots in the Zuka print. Now these came out in 2018. I originally tried them on in the really tall um, cowboy style and I just felt that they were a bit restricting on me. Um, but as the time went past, I was just really, really, really wanted those shoes. So I just kept looking, kept looking. I looked all over Tradesy and different other websites and they were always either sold out of my size or whatever have you. Um, and I really wanted the shorter ones, the shorter ones with the tallest heel, if that makes sense. But needless to say, I was not able to find them, but I was able to score the tall ones. Now, let me tell you the debacle with these, okay? So again, I told you I wanted the shorter ones, not the taller ones. I am short, so these like hit the back of my knee. So what I ended up doing, I found a pair of the short ones on Instagram from an Instagram seller. She was selling them in a size 39. And I'm like, I don't remember that I could fit a 39. I could have sworn I had tried on a size 38. And so I knew that if I purchased them from her, I would not be able to get my money back and I'd be stuck with a pair of shoes that I could potentially never wear. So what I did was I went on Tradesy. I found the tall ones. They did not have any short ones um, with that heel height. And it was important to get that same heel height so that I can make sure that the size was right. So I found the tall plaid ones and I was able to get those in a 38 and a half. I know a whole ring around the rosy. Got those in a 38 and a half. They were a little loose. So I knew that the 39 would be way too big for me. So what I did was I sent those back to Tradesy and I got a credit. I waited around. It may have been like a week and a half, two weeks after that. And guys, I spotted these on the Tradesy website. You would not believe the price of these. Now, mind you, before when these were selling on Tradesy, they were selling for like a thousand dollars. I picked these up for $627, you guys. $627, they were brand new. I've worn them a few times now, and again, I'm short. So you see the like crinkling here? That's because on me, um, you know, I'm sure my legs are short, so they kind of slouch down a little bit more. But guys, I ended up having to get the tall ones because at this point, we're two years in and I was just like, I'm not going to be able to find these shoes ever again. So I might as well take advantage and I could not beat $627. These even retailed for way more than that. You know what I'm saying? I think these retail for about $850. So yeah, this was a complete steal. I had to grab them. Yes, I would have still rather the shorter ones because to me, they would have been a little easier to wear. Um, but if you're a little bit taller than me, like these are so good. They're such a statement, but they're also classic in my opinion. And I'm from Nashville, so it's always cowboy boot season. The next item on my luxury wish list was a Chanel flap 19 or 19 flap. Chanel 19 flap? Chanel flap 19 whatever it is girl I had to have one at first I was like oh I'm not quite sure but when I saw the small size I was like that's the one the reason why I wasn't sure about the original well when I first saw the Chanel 19 was because it was really slouchy so when I saw the small one I felt like it held its shape a bit more and also the leather ones were a little bit more slouchy but I found that the fabric ones tend to hold this sh their shape a little bit more so I ended up going with the light blue color and at the time, I just thought this was the bee's knees. This is the jersey material, like I said, in the light blue, um, small size. It is so cute. I have the strap 
tucked in here. So you can wear this crossbody. It automatically comes with a top handle and you know we love that. Um, this bag is adorable. One thing I will say is that this bag is a dirt magnet, okay? When I first got it, I was so careful with wearing it. I've worn it maybe like five times and I did get a little stain on it. So right then and there, I put her right back in the dust bag, girl, and she was on the shelf. But I mean, it's bound to happen because it is a jersey material now later on my mom ended up investing in the white medium and i was like oh girl that bag is fire and she got the leather so i use her bag a lot it's not mine i know you guys be asking about it but yeah i use her bag a lot because you know she's at home and she don't mind so we share sometimes but most of the time it's just me borrowing <laughs> But yeah, so I love the white medium and it is really slouchy, but it's so nice. You know, I love white accessories and that white on gold is everything. So, but I'm still happy with the small size. I still think the small size is the best size just because of how it holds its shape. I just wish that maybe, yeah, I would have gotten the leather because it probably still would have held its shape. In the small size um but this is just so cute and i don't have a blue bag like this so i just thought you know i needed it and it looks even good with this like sage color that i'm wearing today so yeah it's not a regret but it's definitely not a bag that i reach for too often because i'm just a little bit nervous about getting it dirty now the next item on my luxury wish list was a balenciaga windbreaker now i know a lot of you guys when i mentioned that y'all were like girl a windbreaker from balenciaga okay i love balenciaga Balenciaga can do no wrong in my eyes and I liked that kind of tomboy feel but I also thought that it would just be cute kind of chill with some um you know like some vinyl leggings or something like that but I could never find it at a really good price there are certain things that I'm just not gonna spend a lot of money for so the most I probably would have spent for that jacket was like six hundred dollars and anytime you know I saw it in my size girl it was going for over a thousand dollars I think it retails for like seventeen hundred and up that's a no for me <laughs> it's a no for me i still think it's a really cute jacket though especially depending on the colorway you get um it could be really cute for like those casual laid back vibes and especially especially now that we're in you know lockdown i mean there's no need to really dress up like that. So I think it's cute, but I probably would not invest in that now. So that's an item that I did not get and I don't really regret not being able to get it. So next on my list were a pair of Chanel black mules, the black pearl mules. Now I have the two-tone, which is the beige with the black cap toe, um, but I wanted the all black. Now girl, let me tell you something. Chanel went and change the style of the mule. I was devastated, okay? So the new style of the mule, needless to say, I wasn't able to find them, okay? I have seen them, um, you know, pre-loved, but they never in my size. But I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna go to the store and grab them because I love them and I can't get them off of my mind. I went to the store and they had these new mules. I'll pop up a picture and they're longer, like, the front is longer, so it covers more of your foot. Uh-uh. And then the whole heel is in pearls. It's just a little bit more matronly, in my opinion. And that's just so not my vibe. So I was so upset. I'm like, are y'all ever going to bring back the original style or is that done? And they said that, you know, this is the new and improved style. So the only way that I'm going to be able to find the black ones is pre-love. So I'm still on the hunt for those. Um, I'm not super pressed about it, but I would like them. I think they're a nice classic pair of shoes and they go with so many things and they are super comfortable. Um, I don't find that the two-tone ones go with as much, but I wear a lot of black and white. So that's why I like those. But um, yeah, I still want them, but buying them new is probably going to be trying to find a needle in the haystack. All right, so the next item on my wish list was a Fendi peekaboo in an exotic, okay? Now, the exotics are super expensive. Um, I mean, the lowest I think I've seen uh, an exotic mini peekaboo was about $6,000. And I really want either a green or a black one with gold hardware. Oh, that bag is so beautiful to me. 
Now, what had happened was I ended up finding um, a, I think it was like a corally orange color peekaboo pre-loved. And I picked it up because I wanted to know like, would I really get use out of it? Would I love it? And at the time I was looking for like an orange, you know, summer bag. When I got it, I just was not thrilled with it. Um, I actually ended up selling it. Um, and it just wasn't a bag that I liked, to be honest. I did not like the shape of it. Um, yeah, I just wasn't thrilled at all. And it could be because I just, you know, I settled and I didn't get the one that I really wanted, but it just wasn't the one for me. I do like, like I said, a structured bag. And that bag to me just seemed like it was a little bit misshapen, but of course it was pre-loved. So maybe, you know, it wasn't stored properly, whatever have you. Needless to say, I have not picked up a peekaboo um, mini and I'm not really on the hunt, but if I see one that comes up that I love, I will get it um, for a reasonable price. I'm not, I'm not spending $6,000 for no Fendi peekaboo. It's just not for me. Um, but I do think that they are really cute bags depending on like you know the material the colorway and things like that so that's another one that I was not able to check off my list but it's okay so the next bag that was on my wish list was of course another Chanel you guys know I love Chanel and I wanted a patent leather Chanel bag. Um, for some reason, I just love the patent leather. I didn't care if it was a mini, um, a small, a medium, whatever. I Whatever color, whatever. I didn't care. I just like the patent ones. They're so fun. They just look like little candy bags for some reason. I don't know. But I was able to find the steal of a lifetime. You guys, I purchased this from an Instagram seller. And OMG, this is my Chanel reissue 226. And I love this bag so much. It's in black, so it's a classic. It has this gorgeous silver hardware. Look at the strap. The strap of this bag is so beautiful. It looks so good crossbody, especially with like a nice wool coat. This is one of the prettiest bags I think I have that is like just super classic. It's so good. It holds so much. It's really pliable. It's comfortable to wear. I can't say enough great things about this. And again, I got this for a steal, you guys. Um, it was about $1,600. Okay. Like girl. Okay. Listen. Okay. I love this bag so much. This is like my everyday bag when it comes to fall and winter, because I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to be careful with it. Um, the only thing you have to do is just wipe her down and then store her and pull her back out when you're ready to use it. So this is one of my best purchases of 2020. And I actually have a video on my best and worn purchases of 2020. So make sure you guys check that out. But yeah, love the Chanel reissue. This bag is so underrated. Um, if you are thinking about a reissue, go for it. Okay, take my word for it. It's it's everything. So the last bag that was on my wish list was a Dior saddle bag. Now, I kind of gone back and forth with the saddle because I knew that the saddle was super popular in the early 2000s. And when it came back, it was just so expensive in my opinion. It was like $3,000. And I'm just like, I could have got this bag pre-loved if I would have been diligent enough to purchase right at the beginning. But of course, I'm always late. I waited and girl, they were just so expensive. But I ended up wanting the saddle in the uh, cream or white leather with the gold hardware. And I actually went to the store to purchase it and I did not love it on me. Um, I felt like my boobs were a little too big to wear it like under my arm. And, and so I just didn't purchase it at the store at the time. But I can't lie to you guys, I kept thinking about that bag. So I was able to find one pre-loved and I ended up getting this like nude poudre color. I think it's what it's called. And this bag is so gorgeous. Um, I know a lot of you guys were like, go ahead and get the saddle because I showed you guys um, when I tried it on in the store, not this particular one, but um, you were saying that, you know, it would be cute handheld and I still can, you know, put it on my arm, but it's just like right up under my armpit, girl. Um, very much so early 2000s, okay? But I do love this color. I like the gold hardware. It's, this is a nice bag to have. And it is like an old to, you know, the early 2000s. So I'm happy that I was able to pick this up pre-loved and that I did not have to spend the full amount for this. Um, the only issues that this had, I think it had like a little bit of color transfer, but I can't even find it now. 
So I was able to get this for a really good deal. And this is in the textured, I don't know if they call this pebbled, the grain leather. Um, so it's really durable. One thing about these uh, saddlebags is that they don't hold much. I have a little bit of stuffing in here right now. Um, the inside is suede, but it doesn't hold a ton. So even though it's like it looks like a larger bag, it's totally not. So this is just a cute little like fashion girl bag, in my opinion. But the color combo on this is beautiful. Like it's giving brunch, right? It's giving brunch vibes. So cute. So yeah, um, I think I'm done with the saddles um, unless I just find one for like an amazing deal. I mean, it would have to be under a thousand dollars, but for now I'm super happy with this one. So I also had a Balmain blazer on my wish list and not the typical Balmain blazers, but I really love the boucle or the tweed blazers. And I was actually able to find one on my Teresa. And guys, I picked it up. It was like a white shaggy blazer. When I got that blazer in the mail, I was appalled. Okay, I, the blazer was on really good sale. It was like a you know nine hundred dollars, but when I got that blazer in the mail, I was just like, this don't look like no nine hundred dollar blazer, girl. This looks like a forty five dollar blazer. It was just ratty, and of course, I knew that it had the like fringe detailing and like you know, shagginess. If I can find a picture, I will post it. But in person, it just did not translate. It was just not it. So I do still want a Balmain blazer, but I'm not pressed about it. Um, if I come across one at that price that looks more structured and better, I will get it. But if not, girl, I'm not too worried about it. I have so many like dupes at this point. I think I'm about over it. Okay. But, um, so I did not, well, I did get the blazer, but I sent it back and I got my money back on that one. So yeah, I'm still without a Balmain blazer, but it's fine. So the next item that I had on my luxury wish list was a pair of shoes and they were the Manolo hangisis. I have been wanting a pair of hangisis for the longest time. I could never find them ever, ever, ever in my size. Okay. It was just not meant to be. So on my wish list, I had them in either yellow or bright pink. They have two different pinks. I wanted the bright fuchsia pink and you guys, I finally, finally, finally picked them up in yellow. These are the 105 heel height, if you guys can see. And I was able to snag these um, on sale. I got these, I believe they were like two to three hundred dollars off. So a really good deal. I love this color. It's so beautiful. I also like the fact that it has the gunmetal detailing because some of them have a uh, white crystal, some have gunmetal crystals, and some have pearl crystals. But these are so cute to me. I just love them. Now, Manolo Blahniks and sizing, okay? All over the place, honey. All over the place. What I have learned through my research is that depending on the dots on the bottom of the shoe, that depends on what factory the shoe was made in, and that also determines the size. So mine has three dots on the bottom and I had to get a size 37. Now they told me that they ran true to size. So I got a 37 and a half. Girl, they was flipping and flapping off of my feet. Then I was like, should I get a 36 and a half or should I just get a 37? So I ended up getting the 37 and I still need a little cushion in the back, but I feel like the 36 and a half would just be too small. Okay, so that's that on that. Now I also ordered a pair on Neiman's recently in the Black Friday sale and I got those for my mom in a size 38 because she had a pair of 38 and a half that were a little too big for her. I get those in the mail and I'm like, let me open them up just to make sure. Girl, why can I fit the size 38 in black? So I know my mom cannot fit the 38 in black because I wear a seven and a half. So that just shows you that they just vary in size depending. Those have five dots on the bottom. So you just really never know. The best way to pick up a pair of Manolo Hangisis is to buy them in store unfortunately. Um, and my store is always sold out. So I'm just going to stick with this size 37 girl and just put a little insert. They make them even more comfortable. Um, these are really comfortable shoes. One thing I will say, if I do get another pair, I'm going to get the, uh, 115 heel height because to me, this is really short. This is a little heel. Like 105 is supposed to be pretty tall, but the way that the shoe is shaped, 
it's really not that tall at all. So these are still really cute and very comfortable. Um, and I just like this pop of color. They're beautiful. I think I'm gonna just do the rest of the video with these on. They just make me so happy. I love these shoes. All right, y'all. So the last item that was on my 2020 luxury wish list was a luxury watch and it was a Rolex in particular. Um, I was very specific about the Rolex that I wanted and I was able to find it. You guys have seen this watch several times. I don't wanna bore you with it, but I was able to pick up the 36 mm Jubilee Rolex um, and it has the mother of pearl white dial with the diamonds in the dial. No diamond bezel, all original factory um, pieces, no custom pieces. So I was so happy and the condition of this watch is mint, okay? It's in mint condition. So this is like the best investment of 2020 for me. This is something that I wear literally every single day. And I just, I'm over the moon about this watch. So you guys see this in every last one of my videos. Um, and yeah, I love this watch so much. This was, like I said, the best investment piece ever. All these other things are just, you know, like fun things. And of course, none of these things are must-haves. They're all luxuries. So it's not like, you know, honey, we ain't gonna make it without them. We definitely will. But I just, I, you know, I'm happy with what I have acquired and I'm not mad about the things that I have not. So we have made it to the end of my 2020 luxury wish list. I'm super happy with everything that I was able to acquire and the things that I wasn't, I mean, I'm okay with that too. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was fun and helpful for you all. So make sure to check out that description box below. I'll have as much linked as I can. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you on my next one. Bye guys.